What's going on y'all? Rap Critic here. And this was a Kofi requested episode by Ryan Andrews. Now, song and movie requests are pretty backed up right now, but if you want to make album live stream or best of requests, hit the link below at ko-fi.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash rapcritic to get all my material early, including reviews, new songs, and podcasts. So let's talk about a little flip. An MC who rose to prominence around the mid-2000 explosion of rappers like Paul Wall and Chameleon Era, with his biggest hits Game Over and today's song Sunshine. Now, personally, Flip was one of the ones I didn't get into as much outside of the big hit singles, and it's mainly because, well, I don't know how else to say it other than his style just felt so slow. And don't think I'm getting it twisted. I know the Texas sound is that slowed down, screwed up feel, and joints like Still Tippin' or DJ Screws Production or a slew of UGK joints about coming down throat, swinging sideways with the slab and the car with the candy paint, you know, those are still bangers for me. So I don't get this feeling when I listen to any other Texas artist. It was really specific to him. Lil Flip's rapping was like the most extreme stereotype of that too slowed down sound whenever I heard him rap on tracks. His delivery was just so deep and laid back sounding that it always gave off that effect. So anytime I'd hear him, it just felt like, I hope you're ready. I'm about to smack the crap out you like your mama used to. Oh my God, skip this guy. So when I went in to check out his stuff for this episode, I was expecting a bunch of NyQuil level bars from a guy who got lucky with a couple of hits. But oh how wrong I was. The first thing I kept seeing was him proclaiming to be the freestyle king all over his first mixtape. And I was thinking, whoa, I don't remember this. All I remember was the leprechaun thing. I mean, look at this guy's first mixtape with this obviously super tall guy dressed up to look like a leprechaun with the Lucky Charms graphics. Like, come on, he can't be someone taking himself serious as an MC, right? But sure enough, when you take a listen to the tracks where it's clear he's freestyling, the shit he was spitting was actually pretty well put together. From the flow, I'm a soldier, I write rhymes in my folder. Yeah, yeah, I got more crystals in Folger, that's coffee. Hoes wanna to toss me, get off me Hoes, they stalk me from Milwaukee My next tail, inhale, exhale Half of my niggas locked up in jail Like here, with the slow motion cadence You can tell it's what gives them just enough lyrical breathing room To come up with the interesting verbal flips That come out more well crafted than you'd expect off top I'm in Homestead, killing with the real niggas We wearing platinum fubu Y'all still wear fear here, figure I almost fucked up a nigga, I'm the king I can freestyle all night till the doorbell ring So pay me, the radio go play me Look at my yard, I got more toys than KB Yeah, this dude's a true blue about this freestyle and shit uh, Apparently he grew up doing this shit in clubs since he was nine I was in every club, you know what I'm saying At a young age, I'm talking about between 9, 10, 11, 12, you know what I mean In the club, freestyling Cause it was for the adults, for me to be that advanced as a kid with my vocabulary, it was like they always wanted to show me off. Hey man, freestyle, man, show them. And I hear those previous rhymes and I think, geez, what made me think this guy wasn't dope? Then I was like, wait, I remember the lyrics from his first hit, Game Over. And re-listening to it now, yeah, I wasn't wrong. That track absolutely does not give off the impression that he was some complex wordsmith in this bitch. I'm free of being like a football field, you might fuck around and think I signed a football field. Like, uh, this is the freestyle king over here? Like, oh yeah, who could have possibly pulled that wordplay off the dome? In fact, I distinctly remember that being the most clever attempt at wordplay from the whole damn song, with everything else just being generic brag raps you could have heard on any other track, but, you know, slower. I take 15 minutes to drop a track, yeah. I take half a minute to load my game. Wait, but is it loading a gun just like that? How Matrix slow motion is this guy? And look, I hate to say it, because I genuinely enjoy the mixtape joints where he's actually having some fun, but once you go anywhere near the two-disc yawn fest that today's song comes from, track after track, it's unfortunately the same basic flow and rhymes you'd expect, with any clever lyrics being few and far in between. And for today's review of Sunshine, it's about more of the same, with the main difference being the lighter beat work. So that said, let's get into the track proper. Oh, little flipper. Little flipper. They call him Flipper, Flipper, faster than light. Okay, sorry, but if the dude calls himself Flipper, I, I gotta throw that reference in there. Although calling Flip faster than lightning does feel a little ironic. Take half a minute to load my game. But all right, seriously though, to get into it, first off, I actually really like the bright pop radio ready hook and production. It's almost too syrupy sweet with that squeaky synth line and everything, especially when you remember this line shows up pretty prominently. And it's like, oh, well, dang, because the first time you hear it, it sounds like it's supposed to just be a straightforward love song, right? 
Especially with the hook about being her sunshine. It's like lullaby to a lover levels of intimacy for someone who's just a DTF contact. Sunshine is what you call someone near and dear who brings warmth and solace into the depths of your heart. Not just a casual booty call. But hey, when you're wrapped up in what feels like a special moment with someone, what difference does it make? As long as you're compatible, who cares what the label is? Maybe we can spend some time. And I will say, in terms of how these songs usually play out, it's typically the female singer spouting all these sweet declarations of earnest love, all the while the main rapper directly makes it clear he just wants sex. But in this context, I mean, the, the singer's lyrics makes it seem like she's actually pretty comfortable with the situationship idea. We don't have And it's like, oh, okay, well, that's refreshing. Uh, having the girl actually say, hey, maybe it's not that deep, but that's okay. Let's just have a good time. Now, of course, with this being a pop rap song, you expect the dude's gonna play his Danny Zuko role of not really holding up his end of the bargain of the romantic side of things. But he does stick with the theme and at least actually sounds invested in her. That said, there's certainly a couple of eyebrow razors in there. Like, I always remember folks clowning on this worst lyric contender. Cause I like to eat spaghetti, shrimp, and steak, and I'll adore you. I treat you like milk, I'll do nothing to spoil you. Cause, yeah, you do more with milk than just let it spoil. But it's like, uh, you know, it's supposed to be cutesy and cheesy uh, just to get across the message that he's going to get her anything she wants. It's like the 50 cent love you like a fat kid loves cake thing. You know, it's the doofy line where the girl on the date's supposed to cheekily throw some popcorn at you after you say it because you're just such a dopey eyed lover boy. Plus, in terms of the rhyme satisfaction, eh, sure, it's not perfect, but honestly, it's more satisfying than a lot of forced rhymes I've heard on the show. Like, uh, compared to most, eh, adore ya, spoil ya, uh, not the worst stretching to make that work. Besides, uh, I will give it credit as one of the few thugs need love two songs where the rapper's actually offering something reciprocal in the relationship. I mean, Fat Joe's What's Love and Ja Rule's Always On Time, they clearly don't care about the women at all. Slow down, baby. Let you know from the gate. I don't go down, baby. And Nelly's Dilemma song was all like, oh yeah, cheat on your man and leave your kids for me while I sacrifice nothing in return. And 50 Cent's 21 Questions was over there like, hey girl, if I was in prison for most of the good years of my life, you'd still put up with me, right? Meanwhile, Flip's just like, hey, if your culinary skills are good, I'm dropping cash on you. Simple as that. Need a lady on the streets, but a freak in the sheets that know how to cook cause I like to eat spaghetti, shrimp, and steak, and I'll adore you. And you know, I, clearly it's a relationship built on material wealth, as he explicitly says that the reason you need to answer when he calls is because he does indeed have expensive rims. Just answer your phone whenever I call cause I'm riding on chrome whenever I ball. Plus, uh, the dude's apparently switching cars every day. I know your friends wanna holler cause I got them dollars pushed to make back Monday, Tuesday, and Impala. And you know each one's got the candy paint on it, so who wouldn't want to see what he's got going on? That said, it sounds like he doesn't need to put too much effort into pleasing the ladies because it sort of sounds like the women in his life are like really easy to impress. They want to roll because they like my style and when I pop my collar I make them smile. I okay, I, I know collar popping was a thing, but I, I don't remember it making the ladies swoon or nothing like that. It it's just tucking at your collar. You're not exactly pulling a fucking rose from behind her ear. But then you hear a line like this. I got bills to pay. I got moves to make. But when my plane touch down, pick me up at eight. Don't be late. And it kind of throws you off a bit. Like, whoa, 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 what was that last bit about? Pick me up at eight. Don't be like, well, hey, you, you're doing a cutesy song for the ladies. What's with the snippiness about being on time? Now, you could say he just added it as an extra rhyme there, but just as a tag at the end there with the delivery, it plays as a little unexpectedly demanding. Like, in the midst of the sweet lovey-dovey song, why even bring it up, you know? You think you know my type, but you ain't got no clue about what a real like me do. Oh, uh, but at least he's full of surprises, though. I mean, <laughs> hey, you may assume what a mainstream rapper would care about, but the reality might be much different. I like to stack my bread and flip my chips. Oh, you like to make money and do things that will make you more money? Okay, I, I think she could have guessed that one. But then when we get to the end of the last verse, he sounds weirdly unconfident about the stability of the relationship. You couldn't ask for more, because we got it out. Because you're my baby girl, right? Right? Are, are you sure? Because he doesn't sound too secure in that answer. Because you're my baby girl, right? Right? Hell, when the chorus comes back, he seems so dubious about her answer. It almost sounds like maybe he turned his neck and his name went missing. Shit, maybe she's off to sing this hook to the next even cooler guy with an even bigger car with even candier paint. Hey, bro, she told you what the situation was. We don't have to be in love. And therefore, no expectations of loyalty. But seriously, though, overall, I give this like a two out of five. 
Yeah, it's a little chintzy and basic, but uh, come on, it serves its clear purpose as the kitschy puppy love joint, and at least the female singer gets some semblance of agency in terms of what she wants. Usually it's the girl singing her heart out about everlasting love while the guy's just going, nah, bitch, you'll never tie me down. <laughs> but here it seems pretty clear. He wants the V, she wants to hang out with a rich player who will provide for her, and it's what it is as a friends with benefits thing. That said, the nectary sweet vibes in the music run contradictory to the just for now undertones they're clearly going for in the lyrics. And Flip, as expected, was pretty pretty underwhelming, energy and wordplay wise, but the hook does a lot of heavy lifting to help make it stand out as at least notable enough to come back to. And hey, in a genre filled with so many obviously lopsided dynamics in the context of the lyrics, it is nice to have something that sounds a little more mutual in the grand pantheon of Thugs Need Love 2 songs. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like cause it helps, comment if you have something to say cause it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell cause that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course that's ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations, and patreon.com slash rapcritic for ongoing donations, where you can see episodes early, see all the music and stuff I'm working on, and join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song. Peace.